Hi guys, Mr. Hescox back again with your next video lesson for the next section in chapter 11. Uh, thought question of the day, why can't two animals share the same niche? It was also part of the last chapter, the last section in the chapter. If you have the same niche, those two animals will become in direct competition and one organism will outcompete the other. So let's go over your homework from the last time. And then we'll talk about limiting factors today. All right, number one, a forest can be the blank of woodpeckers. The forest is the habitat for a woodpecker. An organism's habitat has the food and blank the organism needs to survive. The food and materials is the answer for that one. The role of an organism in its habitat is its niche. That's the rule of the habitat. Niche is like its job. An anthill is an example of a habitat. Yeah, this is the time of year where ants start to come back out. Oops. If two populations have the same niche, the population best suited to the niche will, this is also your warm-up question, they will survive. The best suited organisms are going to outcompete. It's like if you're bigger, faster, and stronger, and you play football against somebody who's little and puny, you're probably going to win. If two populations of moths live in the same habitat, they will share the same niche. What will happen to these populations? One will outcompete the other. They both won't die. The winter definitely won't move, and one moth don't get candy. The habitat of a rattlesnake is the hot, dry desert. Could this organism live in the Arctic? No. Snakes do not live in the Arctic. They cannot handle the extreme cold. Snakes are cold-blooded, or what we call ectotherms. They cannot handle the cold, and they will not survive. So, number eight had like a bunch of parts, so I broke it into pieces. Which kind of habitat does a blue jay live? Well, blue jays live in the air. Which kind of habitat does a garter snake live? They live on land. What kind of habitat does a seaweed live in? Obviously water. Sharks live in water. A water lily. Find those in ponds. They live in water. What kind of habitat does a bat live? That's back in the air again. And that takes us to the end of your homework from the other day. Let's get started on our lesson. Be sure that you're watching the videos at home. Be sure that you're filling in your notes at home. There's a limit to the amount of time that a video can be, and I can't video myself showing somebody else's video that I use in the class. What are limiting factors? So a limiting factor is very similar to any, well, it's anything that can limit where an organism can live can limit the population numbers. So foxes are limiting factors of any type of small mouse, rabbit, anything that can catch on the ground. So a predator is a limiting factor of any of your prey species. Other limiting factors can be the temperature. You know, we talked a little bit in that last uh, homework about snakes not living in the Arctic. The temperature is a limiting factor for where snakes can live. Uh, water. Certain plants need lots of water. Some plants don't need as much. You know, cactuses can live in the desert. Water is a limiting factor on what plants can live there. You don't find oak trees in the desert. It's not enough water. The types of soil are limiting factors. The types of sunlight can be a limiting factor. If you grow into the big woods where there's lots and lots of trees and the leaves are out, there's very little grass growing on the ground. The trees form what we call a canopy. And that canopy blocks the sunlight from the soil and prevents little things from growing on the ground. Temperature, water, soil, and sunlight are what we call abiotic. 
abiotic, the A in front of biotic means not, bio meaning living. A biotic factor is a living limiting factor. So when you see the A in front of biotic, that means not living. The number of green plants in an area, green plants are living. The number of animals in an area are biotic factors. So those are going to be your biotic factors. What do limiting factors cause? Limiting factors cause something called a carrying capacity. A carrying capacity, to put it simply, is very much, this cup can only hold so much milk. If I add any more milk to the top of this cup, what's going to happen? It's going to leak out the sides. Carrying capacity is the maximum amount that can be held in an environment. If you add any more, it has to go somewhere. That means either die, or it could mean that it might have to move somewhere else. You know, if more deer move into an area than what can su survive there, they might just move to a better area. Oftentimes, we represent carrying capacity as a graph. They often call it this S-shaped graph. And it looks like this. So you start out with a very low population. And over time, it'll grow. This section right here is where your limiting factors kick in. And when it levels out right there, that is what we call carrying capacity. If the population becomes too high, they either have to move or die. The limiting factors, which kick in about the size of this curve right here is when they slow down the population growth, are what define that. Within that, we have something called a range. A range is the length or the size of the area in which an organism can be found. Bears range from 50 miles. Black bears in Pennsylvania wander all summer long finding food. Depending on where they like to be, they'll stay there for a while, and then they'll move on to find new food. All right. Give three things that can be limiting factors in the three populations that they limit. Go ahead. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to erase the whiteboard, and then I'll be back in just a few seconds to talk about your answers. All right. Let's see what you guys came up with. So an example of a limiting factor that I thought of was sunlight. Is sunlight living or is sunlight not living? Sunlight is not living. So sunlight is abiotic. Something that sunlight will control will be different types of grass populations. If there's not enough sunlight, the grass won't grow. So maybe sunlight is a limiting factor for grass. Another type of limiting factor could be temperature. If it's too warm, you won't have polar bears wandering around. Because I don't know about you, I don't want to get eaten by a polar bear. So the temperature that we live in can be a limiting factor for a polar bear. So one last limiting factor. If I had the limiting factor are frogs. Frogs are limiting factors of mosquitoes, which are starting to come out at this time of year. Temperature, alive or not alive? Well, 
temperature is not alive, so it's abiotic. Frogs, alive or not alive? They are alive, so frogs are biotic. All right, guys, that takes us to the end of the lesson. Let me review here what we have to do the rest of the day. You guys have these sections to read, 262 to 263. The questions will be in Google Classroom. Thank you for following along. Make sure you watch your videos. Make sure you're filling in your notes. I'll see you next time. Thanks.